Hello and welcome back to Bad Review. Today we're looking at First Issue Special, Issue 7, featuring the Creeper. So we get a return of the Creeper in this one. Um, apparently he had been absent from comics for a while. And this issue is where the series of First Issue Special diverges from the issues we've seen up to this point. The Creeper's an established character. He's been around for a while, and not only is he back, but we also have a different creative team. So the, instead of Jack Kirby issues, now we have an issue written by Michael Fleischer and art by Steve Ditko and Mike Royer. Uh, the editor was jo Joe Orlando. All these guys have been around for ages. Some of them, I think, are, uh, I think uh, Steve Ditko's dead, but Joe Orlando was around for ages, so... This issue definitely had promise at the beginning, I thought. So at the first page there where we get the credits, we get a little teaser of uh, the Creeper falling off into some fire. And now if you look at the cover and you're looking at it thinking, oh my gosh, who's the guy in the goofy costume? Well, I'd say which one? Uh, the one in yellow is the Creeper. The other one is Firefly. He's an old Batman villain. Now why is a Batman villain fighting some guy called the Creeper? Well... I'll have you know that the Creeper runs around Gotham City. Or at least he used to. I haven't seen him around. But I haven't been reading comics for a while. So the story opens in Gotham Bay where uh, the Gotham Penitentiary is. Which I think is uh, now Blackgate Prison. I think they actually gave it a name. But I think it's the same structure because Blackgate's on the island. And I'm pretty sure the Gotham Penitentiary is... So we open with... The Warden giving a tour to um, uh, the Creeper, whose alter ego is Jack Ryder. He's a TV commentator. Sort of a pseudo-investigative reporter. If they bring the Creeper back, they probably will make him like a political pundit or something like that. Like a, almost like a Sean Hannity or Bill O'Reilly or Tucker Carlson type. If you know who those people are. So th that would be a little more interesting to see how the political dynamics of that. Um, instead of just the usual social justice characters. Uh, try making one of them on the other side. So uh, we've got a tour where Ryder is uh, walked through the prison. And it's, it's not exactly a high security prison. And we see the, a brief appearance by the Scarecrow, Two-Face. And then they come across the sky. He's like, who's this? And the Warren's like, oh, this is Garfield Lins. He was put in isolation for attacking another inmate. He used to commit crimes under the name The Firefly until Batman bagged him years ago. That was an actual quote. I didn't write that crappy dialogue. Uh, so the Warden doesn't even know this guy's case file. So they continue on with the tour and we cut back to Lins who's... Like, oh, it's a good thing the Warden's a moron who doesn't read files. Paraphrasing here. And um, he says, I'm grateful for the warden's ignorance. Had he appreciated my true talents, he never would have let me work backstage during the annual prison play. Because Firefly, this Firefly, isn't necessarily the Firefly that came about later in the 80s and 90s. This one was more like Mysterio, where he worked with lighting effects and illusions. So he also creates lasers and stuff like that. So this guy was able to steal some lenses and lighting filaments to build what he calls a lazo lighter which melts the bars of his cell he runs out and then promptly zaps a guard and probably burned a hole through his chest because he just melted some steel beams with that thing well that of course sets off the alarm and uh mr Ryder runs off uh, instead of going where he's supposed to he ditches the cameraman ducks around a corner and turns into the creeper Professor Yats, we're told, entrusted him with something called his power formula and implanted a molecular transmuter inside of his body, which is hidden under his wristwatch where the activator is. So he just hits that and turns into the Creeper. We got all that backstory on how the Creeper got his powers in one panel, which is a nice way to introduce the character. You gotta stop screwing with the flow of the story and get right into it. Get to the action. So he turns into the Creeper and... He has this little laughter thing he does. And since he kind of looks like the Joker, they can play on that a little bit. There was a really cool story where the Creeper actually fought the Joker. Uh, but anyway, um, so he goes after after uh, Firefly, 
but he gets there before the cops do and he gets zapped by the lazo laser thing and he gets knocked down and then by the time he gets up the cops are there and they think he's in on it because he's one of them pesky vigilantes so he's gotta take off knocks the guards down runs off and then promptly ducks around and turns back into jack Ryder. So uh, the warden's like, oh, I told you to stay. We're in my office, blah, blah. And he's like, ah, you know us media types. He was hoping to get, of course, the picture or whatever. So then, meanwhile, we cut back to Firefly, who is hiding out at a lighthouse where he left a bunch and stashed a bunch of his old gear and gets it and gets his goofy costume. And he goes to recruit some thugs, has to impress them by, like, disintegrating one of their friends and uh dematerialize him temporarily with his molecular disassembler and he's like you guys want to join me or what and they're like oh yeah sure why not meanwhile Ryder's trying to convince his boss to let him say the creeper may be one of the good guys he's like whatever no so he has to <laughs> incriminate himself in the crime by saying that the creeper may have been in on it and then they get a tip that there's a fire at the Skytop Diamond Exchange. So, of course, Ryder's on the case. He's got to get out there. And while his camera crew's filming the disaster, he's like, Oh, I'm going to go interview some people. And turns into the creeper and runs up to the top of the building to stop the firefly. He gets up there and, and with his uh, trademark laughter, scares some of the thugs. They get in a big fight. He beats the crap out of the thugs. And Firefly zaps him with an electro lighter, whatever that is. But it... It hits him, he falls off the building, and everybody's like, holy crap. Firefly gets away, Creeper wakes up in the uh, in the uh, prison, he's in the detention ward, a uh, general hospital rather, and uh, they're like, how are you alive? He's like, yeah, you know. So the doctor's like, I'd like to run some tests on you. And he's like, yeah, sure doc, that's the ticket. And as soon as they shut the door, he busts out of the handcuffs, pulls the rails off the window, and flees the scene and of course uh firefly was stupid enough to make a off-handed comment about light duty and that was a term uh meaning fees paid by ships for the maintenance and upkeep of lighthouses and of course the creeper knew that because he's you know a genius or something the plan was for firefly to steal some diamonds off a ship but that can't happen now because the creeper's there to beat the crap out of him and uh, they get into it, and Firefly tries to zap him, but Creeper manages to grab a piece of glass from the white from the lighthouse window that he busted through and reflect the light back at him, which knocks Firefly off of the lightning or the lighthouse, plummeting to his death. And we're not sure if he's actually dead, but it's pretty heavily implied. And the Creeper just laughs, and the issue ends. That's it. That's the story. It's actually a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun reading this. It was silly. Um, I can't say it was bad. It, it was a real strange one. Uh, it was nice to see the Creeper again. I, I like the Creeper. I think he's very underutilized. And it's hard for him to really get a solo book. He's more of a support character. So when he shows up in these like one-shot stories or two-parters, I always like to pick him up. When I can find them. They did a short series of him in the mid 90s. Late 90s maybe. It didn't last long. But I thought it was pretty good. So I, I like the Creeper. I think he's got a nice simplistic costume. It's really weird looking. And it makes him kind of this strange. Goofy sideshow type character. And it kind of works for him. So if you're a Creeper fan. Or you've never read him. I recommend checking this out. It's a great introduction to the character. This issue is not worth a lot. It's going for about two bucks three bucks on ebay and if you're looking for something to read that doesn't have like heavy-handed social issues or anything like that you just want a nice action book this one really fills that role uh the dialogue's a little dated granted because it is from the 70s it's a self-contained story with a goofy obscure batman villain that it, you know is kind of fun so I would say uh, go for it. Check this one out. If you want to read some 70s books that are actually not bad, this one's pretty good. Especially for DC at the time. They were really starting to kind of work their way out of the kiddie market into more of the teens and young adult 
where Marvel was already doing that at this point. You know, this is pre-crisis, so they haven't quite aimed for the more mature audience yet, but they were definitely working in that direction by now. But that'll do it for this one. As always, thanks for listening, and we hope to see you on the next episode.